Do you think the dinosaurs lived during the Middle Ages? No. You, you there is a controversy that. in many schools today. Should something called scientific creationism be given equal classroom time with evolution? For many people, such issues were settled in favor of evolution decades ago. But for many others, evolution remains a controversial topic. If you judge an issue by the number of pages it generates, the case against evolution is growing daily. In books, pamphlets, and newspapers, a number of writers claim proof that evolution has not happened. Evolutionists are replying. But how good are the arguments? Is evolution a crumbling citadel, to quote philosopher Arthur Kessler? Is there really a smoking gun in the case against evolution? Just what is the evidence? I'm Dr. John Cole. I'm an archaeologist. And I've come here to Glen Rose, Texas, near Dallas, where some sensational claims are being made by people calling themselves scientific creationists. They say that humans and dinosaurs once lived together here only a few thousand years ago. And the proof for this lies in the footprints they left behind in the local limestone. The dinosaur tracks are quite well known. The question is, are the human footprints valid? The Somerville County Museum records 50 years of local interest in dinosaurs. Inside, they have all sorts of material available for visitors, including a few books about humans and dinosaurs living together. This three-toed dinosaur track is one of the exhibits at the museum here, and it's been taken out as, as a solid block of limestone from a construction site near Dinosaur Valley State Park. There are claims that human tracks are found alongside the dinosaur tracks at the park. So I think the first thing we should do is go out to the park and take a look at the evidence that we can find out there. Are there human tracks here? 100 million years ago, bipedal herbivores and carnivores and massive quadrupedal plant eaters left their tracks and sometimes their bones in the lower Cretaceous mud. Limey mud, the calcium carbonate remains of countless microscopic marine creatures, hardened into limestone. Occasionally, dark mud from the shore washed over tracks in the limey mud flats, preserving them. The geology is clear. Sediments were deposited in gentle washes, not tumultuous floods. Recently, the Paluxy River has cut through these layers, exposing millions of years of history. Over there, we're told there are tracks made by humans and bears alongside dinosaur tracks. Such fossils would be out of place in the geological column, which was worked out long before Darwin. This mark is striking. Is it a bear or mammal track, as John Morris and others assert? Compare it with this erosion feature, where water has swirled and undercut and dissolved the softer parts of the limestone. Cleaned out, the bear track turns out to be similar, a pitted erosional feature, softer layers have washed out from under harder stone, just as here. The supposed track has these same features on a smaller scale. The so-called claws are on the same soft level as the outline, well above the sole of the foot. The claws are horizontal erosion, not pointed impressions. We need to examine some more of the specific marks being called tracks in these books and other creationist writings here in Dinosaur Valley State Park and at other sites in Texas. Physical anthropologist Dr. Lori Godfrey studies the anatomy and locomotion of humans and other primates. On a hard surface, such as this Cretaceous limestone, we can awkwardly, but semi-successfully, reach successive imprints that were actually made by a much larger bipedal dinosaur. But remember, these Dinosaurs were walking on soft mud. We are walking on now hardened limestone. If there were humans walking on the same mud flats as these dinosaurs, we would expect their strides to have been much sh shorter. If we look at the surface dry, it's clear that it's simply an erosional surface. In fact, without this photograph taken by creationist Cecil Bowerty showing what he took to be a human footprint wetted in, I wouldn't have guessed his outline. Dowerty 
has created a larger than normal sized footprint by selecting arbitrary erosional features as toes. In reality, no footprint exists here, not even that of a dinosaur. So it's not surprising, given the lack of features here, that the creationists have had trouble deciding where their alleged human footprint begins and ends. John Morris, in his book, for example, has called this feature a definite left human footprint, and Cecil Dougherty has illustrated this as a definite right footprint on the cover of his book. Adding water can make a mark more visible to a camera, but it can also make something visible which isn't there. The important point is that none of the salient features of human footprints are present on the surface. In other words, there's no sign of a deep heel strike impression, shallow arch, no roll inward to a deepened ball impression on the medial side, on the inside, no evidence of the big toe bearing weight during toe off, no sign of mud oozing between the pads of the little toes and the ball of the foot. Dr. Godfrey then pointed out other features being called footprints in a trackway. Stepping off the supposed trackway is very awkward. The paces are irregular and far too long, especially for the fairly small alleged footprints. Foot length should predict stride and body size, but these marks follow no anatomical rules. There is no sign of a strider's heel strike, roll, and big toe push-off. The trackway is even more impossible given the original muddy substrate. The marks parallel the river's flow and are simply scour marks left by the grinding periodic floods. Dimple-like marks called toes are identical to countless irregularities in the limestone surface. Some may be left from an original muddy surface. Others are the result of recent erosion. Scour marks or karst erosion, differential dissolving, which exaggerates the irregular surface. Some creationists argue that people in ancient times lived vastly longer than they do today and that they grew to giant size. The result, they say, would be giant stride lengths and feet larger than common today. We found no giants here or any other kind of human tracks. Are there better tracks elsewhere? At the McFall site, a short distance upstream, there are beautiful dinosaur tracks. The Reverend Carl Baugh has conducted excavations here in 1982 and 83 and wants to build a creationism museum nearby. He was interviewed in 1982 and 83 both. Reverend Baugh says that 37 human tracks have been uncovered by spring 1983, buried under solid limestone. In the newspaper article we read 24 prints of Tyrannosaurus Rex. They've all been destroyed. They, so they're there, some totally washed out. All the detail of all of those of each is uh, very questionable. You can tell they're dinosaur tracks. After two years of excavation here, what has been uncovered? A plaque they put here identifies the footprint maker as Humanus Balanthropus, a new form of human. Dr. Godfrey examined a print right in front of the plaque. This is a uh, an interesting feature because it's so featureless. It's not clear to me whether or not it was made by an animal. It could have been made by a piece of uh, vegetation that got lodged in, in the mud somehow. It's not clear that it's an impression made by an animal. If it was made by an animal, it's a very, very um, vague impression, and it's not very clear what that animal was. Uh, it's been suggested that this is a human footprint, but it shows none of the features that we would expect to see for a human footprint. It's much too long for a modern human footprint, given its width. Its width is very narrow. It's very, very long. It sort of, it sort of sweeps up over here, and it's a little ragged on this edge over here. It's not clear which direction the foot was going in. If this is supposed to be a human footprint, you can't see toes, you can't see heel, you can't see any features, anatomical features that you would expect to see in a human footprint. If it was made by a human-like creature, that human-like creature would have had to have been much, much larger than a modern human, given its, its size, given its, its length. But then that creature would have had to have had much, much wider uh, feet. And it would have had to have modifications of the shape of the foot, which would have allowed it to still move in a human-type manner. And none of those features that I would expect to see in a giant 
striding, human-like striding animal are, are here. Um, one can take the measurements and see that it's, it's about the length. Yes, it's about the length of a dinosaur footprint over here. It could have been, it could be one of those just miserable impressions made by a dinosaur. If this so-called Humanus Balanthropus track is not a human footprint, just what would a human footprint look like? Here's the heel, here's the ball of the foot, the toes, and you can see that there's a, a long arch that the foot makes. The human foot has a long arch, which is much higher over here on the inside of the foot than it is as you go to, towards the outside of the foot. In fact, the very outside edge of the foot is very flat. This is the outside or the lateral edge of the foot, and this is the inside or the medial edge of the foot, which is very, very high. Dr. Godfrey wetted her foot to show a modern human footprint with a healthy arch on a hard, unyielding limestone surface. Strong ligaments, muscle, and bone interplay as a sort of spring to ease human strides, forming an hourglass shape. Her track on solid rock is clear. But when she stepped on a softer surface, the results were different. Even inches apart, different posture can make different marks. Mud walking is tricky. One's pace is shortened on soft surfaces because there is less resistance to push off by the foot. The heel strikes first and deep. Then the foot pressure rolls along the outside edge until the weight shifts to the ball of the foot and big toe for push off. The other toes curl up at push off, squeezing mud into the crease behind them. If the mud is soft, it may backfill part of the print. Paleontologist Dr. Stephen Schaefersman examined an alleged human trackway. The second in this series occurs right here. This uh, is about six inches long, and it also occurs in the same position at the rear of a three-toed dinosaur footprint. The creationists say that either the dinosaur stepped on the man track or the man stepped on the dinosaur track. This would explain how you have the dinosaur track and the man track essentially together on the limestone ledge. Now the third human footprint in this series is this feature that the creationists say is a giant man track. Instead of dinosaurs stepping on human tracks or vice versa, these are unquestionably three-toed dinosaur tracks showing their unsung hallux toe print as a sort of heel mark. Instead of a series of tracks proving dinosaurs and humans walked in the same mud and are thus of the same antiquity, this trackway simply demonstrates that tridactyl dinosaurs, like modern birds, have four toes and not three. The Bauanthropus print may be an indistinct paw mark. Tracks of dinosaurs can be identified and classified, although they cannot easily be tied to fossil remains of specific animals. Too many similar species live together. Irenosauripus tracks were left by a theropod dinosaur, a meat-eater. They may have been made by a critter called Acrocanthosaurus. Similar-looking Gypsognites tracks were made by a smaller plant-eating ornithopod, perhaps Tenontosaurus or the larger Iguanodon. The tracks fit known dinosaur foot anatomy. The heel claw of Tyrannosaurus was similar to that on this Tyrannosaurus model, although Tyrannosaurus lived much later and did not make any of these tracks. Scientific creationists imply that scientists have not really worked here, one of the better explored fossil deposits in the world. Bones, not just tracks, are known from many dinosaurs plus smaller creatures. Even tiny fossil pollens and spores from 62 plant genera have been found, but no human bones have ever been discovered, despite intense searches. Dr. Schaeferzman identified these marks as thalassinoides, the genus name of a trace fossil. They are networks of burrows made by a marine arthropod similar to a shrimp. Mud filled their tunnels and the entire sediment hardened into stone. Eroded burrow casts form patterns on the exposed surface, which can be discovered like camels and cloud banks. Some have been mistaken for paw prints. At least one was dug out by Reverend Baugh as a saber-toothed tiger print. Other thalassinoides and parallel lines have been taken for mud ridges between giant human toes. Here, and at the Taylor and Rial's trails, and others shown in the scientific creationist film Footprints in Stone, both stride length and foot length 
match that of bipedal dinosaurs. One of the series of, of footprints in this trail, there are eight over here. And if you look at this, what you see is a very, very clear rear toe impression that was dragged down deep in this mud. And you can also see this, the, the mud flowing, isn't that? Right. Yeah, this, this is a, a dinosaur footprint, and there's, it's got three toes, three mm -hmm. front toes and one rear toe. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing here is that it was, the mud was so soft when the dinosaur put his foot in mm -hmm. that the mud flowed back in at the sides. And you mm -hmm. can see that so clearly here. You right. see the bulge? So that what you end up with is a very, very elongated depression. And when you Excellent get... Excellent dinosaur yeah. tracks, but apparently no human tracks here. We went to see Lee Mansfield, a University of Oklahoma paleontology graduate student. He lives in Glen Rose and was a Dinosaur Valley Park guide for years. Yes, I have been a uh, guide and uh, interpreter at State Park for uh, a number of years. And uh, I have uh, studied these dinosaur tracks for several years also. And I've uh, been encountered by the people who uh, believe that some of these tracks are man tracks. I have never seen a man track in this Dinosaur Valley State Park or anywhere else in Somerville County as far as that goes. And uh, it's, it's extremely easy to make a man track out of one of the dinosaur tracks. A heel mark or one toe can be read as a man track, for example. This widely published man track looks perfect until you look closely and see that there's actually a portion of a three-toed dinosaur track. The man track, perfect toes and all, has been painted into a portion of the real print with oil or perhaps water. Made famous by Eric von Däniken, this track is now disavowed by many creationists but they still publish it. Most outright fakes are a bit less obvious. Tracks like this have been carved for many years. The Adams Brothers of Glen Rose are well known as 30s carvers. This track has been covered with cement to preserve it. Still, it is a classic carved fake. The heel and arch are wrong, the ball of the foot is stylized, and there is no evidence of rolling gait or big toe push off. The toes are too long. These footprints and those in the following scenes are admitted by most creationists to be late 30s carvings, yet they still appear in high school textbooks promoting equal time for creationism, and some authors refer to them coyly as problematical. Clifford Burdick has promoted these tracks as genuine for decades. He has been instrumental in keeping the Paluxy man track legend alive since the heyday of carved fakes in the 30s, and he is widely cited by even the most cautious scientific creationist writers. The most obvious problem with his man tracks is the toe area. They are too long, narrow, and splayed. The big toe is far too narrow, and the ball of the foot is too wide and too far forward and too deep. It shows no evidence of roll towards the big toe. The little toes look like they were carved by someone looking at the top of a foot, not at a footprint. And a giant biped would probably be too heavy to have any arch. The hourglass shape is exaggerated for a giant or anyone else walking in mud rather than on a hard surface. Compare these carved prints with the prints made in the Paluxy River mud by Dr. Godfrey. Among the spectacular dinosaur tracks at the Thayer site near New Brownfells in San Antonio, there are a few singled out as man tracks. Three-toed dinosaurs passed here in large, slow-moving herds, right, left, right, and suddenly a couple of tracks circled with dye, indicating that they should be human. Partially painted with water, these were made on algae-covered mud. The resulting tracks, some clearer than others, depend upon what layer is seen or how much plant matter was stepped upon by the dinosaur. There are under tracks and over tracks, as well as the original tracks. Without the trackway's better prints, some of these could be overlooked or misinterpreted very easily. A lot of people even right now uh, contact me who are creationists. They want to argue with me and try to tell me that these are not dinosaur tracks. And dinosaur and man uh, lived along with each other. And uh, of course, I argue with them against it. And uh, even though I am not an atheist, I believe in the Lord God, but I argue with him on the fact. We have seen a number of tracks described by scientific creationists as human. In each case, they seem to be something else, something more prosaic in some people's eyes, but more exciting to other people. We come back to the dinosaur tracks which stalk across central Texas as records of split-second events 100 million years ago. How does this controversy affect education? We asked Dr. Ronnie Hastings, a high school biology teacher. I enjoy coming here to the Dinosaur Valley State Park to not only look at the dinosaur tracks, but to investigate uh, claims of alleged human footprints here. And I especially like to bring students of mine with me. 
for basically two reasons. One, so that they can examine the evidence uh, themselves, and by so doing, get first-hand experience with, with critical analysis. Um, it's been my experience that creationist claims of human footprints uh, has had uh, a direct influence, I think, in the uh, classrooms here in the state of Texas. Uh, for instance, I've had uh, graduating seniors in high school come up to me and in all sincerity, uh, having supposedly had at least one year of biology, ask me, uh, what is the theory of evolution? What, what does it say? And or making a um, claim like um, that man is descended from present day apes. When I realized that they were serious in their, in their claims, uh, I was curious to know what were the contributing factors that would lead to such misunderstanding or, or ignorance about the theory of evolution. It was shocking to me to realize that students who were graduating uh, here in the early 80s actually had less understanding, basic knowledge of, about the theory of evolution than uh, I had when uh, I, I graduated in the, from Texas public schools uh, in the mid-60s. I, as head of the science department, I investigated what was uh, going on <coughs> with <coughs> the, our local teachers and found that they were essentially avoiding the, the subject and uh, that they were not entirely to blame for that because the textbooks uh, really have very little emphasis on the, the, uh, the theory of evolution. And to me, this was like saying that you uh, had physics without Newton's three laws of motion, or chemistry w without um, the kinetic theory of matter, or the atomic theory of matter. The textbooks in the state of Texas uh, have to have a disclaimer uh, in the, in the front whenever references to evolution are made, and this is sanctioned by the, the State Board of Education. Publishers have responded to this by essentially de-emphasizing the references to the topics in the textbooks and accounting for the lack of, of information concerning the theory of evolution. Then um, a teaching colleague of mine um, shared experiences that he had where in if he mentioned the word evolution in classrooms, he would uh, be visited by c committees of parents or uh, church groups or school officials for trying to teach evolution within the classroom. So it is not surprising, it seems to me, that many teachers would avoid the subject. The problem is that all this results in students such as I mentioned earlier who are going into college without an adequate understanding of the theory of evolution. They are simply not prepared for college uh, level um, materials uh, referencing evolution um, and where, when it is assumed that they have had that. Adequate science preparation then I think is highly questionable in these cases. Instructors of freshman level labs in college have uh, expressed a concern about the lack of preparation of such students. In thinking about the reasons for these claims, the, the influence rather that the uh, creationists have had, the Paluxy River footprints, so-called human footprints, are the hard evidence that is normally cited, especially in this area, uh, besides either religious or political or sociological reasons. And so, in examining the evidence here, uh, firsthand, I found that there was really no evidence on which to make such claims. And it was interesting to me that when students were shown the evidence themselves, uh, they came essentially to the, to the, the same conclusions that the scientific investigators uh, have also, that there is no uh, evidence here for the existence of human footprints, either here in the state park are in the, the McFall site, for instance, or other areas. And um, this is very important to, to demonstrate because uh, it, is, it shows how easy it is for uh, people to be misled by uh, groundless claims and at the same time show how, how easy it is to realize how groundless the claims are by examining uh, the evidence firsthand. It seems that Texas footprints do not disprove the theory of evolution. We have looked at some of the best-known scientific creationist claims, finding no evidence to support them. Alleged man tracks are sometimes fakes, 
sometimes wishful misinterpretations. None of them meet the standards an anatomist, paleontologist, or archaeologist must apply to data to judge them real. The Comanche Indians, who called some of these marks giant turkey tracks, had a mythical explanation and better tune with evolutionary theory, in fact. Modern birds are widely considered to be among the closest living dinosaur descendants. There are countless religious ideas about origins and history. Should a science class take them all into account equally, or should it focus on the best evidence and theory based on the natural world? There is no evidence so far to disprove evolution, although there are many arguments about how it works. People easily accommodate both science and religion, or either or neither. If the case of the Texas footprints is any indication, the case for evolution is in good health, I think.